that that I'm into crime documentaries I'm into crime shows purely because I have a logical mind and I always kind of want to understand the science and I want to understand psychology do you know what I mean like I want to know reasons the reasons why people do what they do and I want to get into the nitty-gritty I want to find out their roots their childhood and all the history of events that led up to you know the most heinous acts like I feel it I find it very interesting and for educational purposes now I do see a lot of comments online talking about you know shows like this it's glorifying um, serial killers and murderers and do you know what I mean it's kind of making them some kind of heroes in a sense and I'd have to disagree purely because I've watched a lot of documentaries and you can kind of tell by the angle on what way or what message is trying to be conveyed and on this one for me I feel like it was more on the side of not I wouldn't say the victims but I would say the psychology behind it because it kind of digs into what his childhood was like what he went through you know all them disturbing years that he had where nobody interjected or did anything and as I've said before it doesn't mean it's like try, I'm not trying to justify any of anyone's actions or anything like that I'm just saying that we should study the reasons behind it because you never know it could prevent another one from being developed do you know what I mean because there are a lot of alarming mutual telling signs and if you know your stuff you know that Jeffrey Dahmer is not obviously you know you know he's a serial killer he's he did a lot but he isn't the worst of the worst again not to justify any of his actions I'm saying if you knew I'm not even just American history when it comes to you know murders and mass murders and things like that it's it's all over the world different countries Colombia even the UK we have serial killers everywhere and I feel like people are unaware of the other serial killers because you know Jeffrey's always mentioned I guess there's Ted Bundy there's John Wayne Garcia can't remember what his name is but you know there's a few that keep getting reproduced and more documentaries as over the years and it's the same ones but people don't know that there's way worse not to say what he did isn't bad because it's mad and it's disgusting for sure however there's worse there's worse and it's bad and for me I feel like the documentary highlights I would say the way that the com- not the community okay the way that the police force definitely failed the victims for one and I feel like it also highlights what an unusual because this, this guy was weird he's on un- he's unusual he's he was not normal like he was not just like your regular everyday business you know working guy with you know a wife and a family or a husband and kids if that's the way he wanted to go yes we know he was gay it's like he wasn't that guy he was a weird guy do you know what I mean he didn't have any friends he was socially awkward and he behaved erratically so it highlights that a white man a gay white man back in them times not even that long ago you know what we're talking 1970s 1980s is that what we're talking 1990s it's like that's not that long ago and for me it really highlights that what a weird person can do what a weird white man in society back then could get away with in front of the police in front of everybody because it went on for so long it went on for so long over a decade if I'm not mistaken and it's like we have to look at it from that angle. Nobody in the film or in the documentary is like clapping for this guy and talking about how amazing he was. It's truly highlighting all the failures that was allowed or it's not even allowed. All the failures that just happened. You know, the police force, everybody involved is going to say it was accidental or it was institutional or there's a reason why they failed. But there's so many failures along the way. 
and it's very sad but also interesting because you know what I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna get into what he did you can literally just google him and you'll see what he did so I'm not even gonna go there um or you could watch the documentary if you haven't watched it and for me it does highlight all the things that went wrong it's not a glorifying series so I think people really need to just step back and really understand the full picture because it's not normal for a boy a child to want to dissect squirrels and rodents and birds and cats like it's not normal to be five six seven eight years old to be desperate to do that and love to do that and that's your only passion like it's not normal for a kid to be trying to you know pick up dead animals and hide them under the floorboards and, and leave them there just to die and wither away it isn't normal but his parents watched him behave this way from a child all the way up into his 20s and his dad went further on to even bring him roadkill and even bring him in the car to go and find dead animals and bring it back to the um to the shed and chop it up together and take out the organs and do all of them things and then they're surprised now his dad was acting surprised later on in life when they found out that he's obviously doing the same thing to humans he's murdering men and he's dismembering their bodies and doing all kinds of things with the organs and everything else and that's exactly what he was doing when he was a child so for me the signs are all there that's not just the only thing I'm not going to go into every single thing that I thought was telling signs however why would a dad why would a father why would a parent kind of feed into them weird fantasies and them weird hobbies why would you do that and it's because they had so much going on in that household that the dad was just like oh yeah this is keeping him quiet this is keeping him out of the way so let him do that but that's not not normal that's weird do you know what I mean and then he went on to grow up and he worked in the butchers for some time and he loved it in there and he was doing extra hours and not getting paid for it that's weird as well because who loves working in the butchers like that that don't want to work there so much after hours and not get paid for it that's how much that's not normal but again that's a telling sign for me I think that's weird and his colleagues and his managers and the people that knew he was working there they should have known or they should have picked up on that that's weird that is strange even while he was in school like he would be one of the only students enjoying dissecting you know the frog in the science lessons it, trying to get extra lessons and taking the frogs home like why is a teacher giving the, the kid um you know dead animals to take home and cut off like why would you do that as a teacher yes you know it's nice that he's interested in biology and science but there's a line you're not giving anyone else rats and shit to take home and dead animals but this one child in school you think it's a good idea to do that so again red flag red fucking flag and not only his dad failed him I did mention the mum but it's so obviously they had another child like a he had so he had a younger brother I think it was and then obviously the mum and dad are going through problems dad's away at work mum's like on drugs and all kinds of medications and do you know what I mean like it's 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 a mess of a home it's not stable it's not happy it's not loving and caring for the family so when he's in college now he comes home I think he comes home early or something like that and then he finds or he discovers his mum trying to sneak off with the younger brother with his younger brother he comes home the car's packed or boxes do you know what I mean she's ready to go and he's like oh yeah wait for me he's about to run inside and get his stuff and his mum's like oh nah nah you stay here fam you ain't coming nowhere you and your crazy <laughs> you and your crazy tail self are gonna stay right here and he's just shocked he's just like hold on do you know what I mean I'm your son too I don't want to be here by myself I, I'm ready to go let's all go together and she's like oh no 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 you stay here so she just sped off now with the other brother and she never looked back these times his dad's in the next country dad doesn't know what's going on his dad doesn't bother to find out so now he's in the yard by himself nobody knows that he's just there looking after himself all of a sudden got no parents got no guardians so now he's just 
dissecting more and being more weird in that house all by himself. And it's like, hello, there's so many people that failed him, especially his family members. I'm sorry, I have to be honest. It's like, now I don't have sympathy for him, sympathy for him before anyone starts with that shit. I'm just saying, as a child, when he was a child, the adults and the guardians and the parents, they all failed him. Period, point blank. And you know what I mean? If somebody wants to debate that or give me their opinion, I'm happy for it. In fact, put it in the comments. If you've watched it, let me know what you think about this because for some reason, this show is really controversial. If you lot knew about the other serial killers and the stuff that they did and how long they got away for and who their victims were, do you know what I mean? You, you wouldn't be having this view on this. You'd understand that they're just highlighting the problems and the failures. But at the same time, in the same breath, I do think it's bad that these serial killers do, even when they pass or they, whatever happens to them, they they get highlighted like it's part of history and it's, do you know what I mean? But then that's just the way of the world. When big events happen, it just gets reported. This is the world that we live in. Do you know what I mean? It's not uncommon for a documentary or film to be made about events from the past. So again, we can't really say they shouldn't do that. I do think they should contact the family members, you know, of the victims, because obviously they did highlight the victims in detail and show their pictures and talk about their age and talk about their life. So because of that aspect, they definitely should have contacted the victim's family. However, the documentary wasn't or bad. Now, I'm not encouraging people to go up and look up, you know, serial killer documentaries, because again... Another angle I'd like to bring is that if your mind isn't able to process information or dissect information and then move on from it, then it wouldn't be good for you because, again, it's like you're watching trauma. It's not good for you. You're watching a lot of violence. You're internalising that. And if you're someone that can't move on from things and, you know, accept things for what they were, and move past it then again it's not good for you to watch because you'll just give yourself nightmares you'll make yourself anxious and scared of the world and you don't want to do that either so if you feel like you're exposed to a lot of trauma every day then don't watch this shit don't watch shit like that but then don't condemn Netflix you know I'm not supporting Netflix either because Netflix is on a whole different thing you know I'm not even going to go into that but you can't condemn Netflix for doing this documentary yes they're capitalizing they're making money off it these actors and these actresses have to get paid for their performance yes that's all true however the be all and end all and the or the message that you should have got from this documentary is the one that you're missing I feel like it's talking about it's highlighting the neighbors as well not only the failures it's highlighting the people that try to help the victims the people that was all on, you know, on side for the victims, the people that was calling the police over and over and over again, the neighbours that were concerned for the smell, calling the counts, calling everyone, they called everybody and nobody came. Do you know what I mean? To go back to my original point, I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but this is a kind of all over the place, <laughs> do you know what I mean, experience. So just follow me, follow me through it. But... <laughs> But there's a lot to it and I don't want to make this video too long but I feel like for people that are interested in the psychology behind things yes they should watch it people that can handle it and people that don't internalize you know shows and horror and things like that yes you know watch it and you know have have a conversation um discuss your thoughts and let it out and let it pass because what can you do there's nothing you can do to make the situation better again because this is from the past this guy is now dead he got killed in prison by another prisoner that didn't like the way he was going on in prison and how he was trying to boast not even boast because this was a weird guy he was just trying to like act like what he did wasn't that bad like he's trying to make a joke of it but again he was a weird guy someone that does this stuff is not normal it's a weird person so it's it's normal for them to be comparing like food to organs and people and that is you know what I mean look at it was weird so (laughs) he offended a lot of people and his life ended I think it was two years into his sentence which is good good riddance good riddance because he's a dangerous guy he's a dangerous guy there would be no 
saving him, no healing him, no no facility would do him any good. It's, that was the only way out for him, to be honest. And I don't feel bad about saying that either. I feel like anyone that harms children or anyone that, you know, that's a serial killer or is committing murders and doing the madness and for no reason is just moving wild. Yeah, they should all be kept locked up. And if they're not locked up, they need to be in the dirt. And that's the end of that. But for me, it also touches about how the mum was, she was on like bare different medications and dealing with some kind of mental issues while she was pregnant with him, with Jeffrey and it. So we've got to talk about the chemical imbalance that she probably passed on and the trauma for her stressed out life as a wife that she passed through to this child. Like, I feel like we need to go deep into these things. And this is why, all ch- I'm not saying this is the only reason and all of these things are the only things that contributed to his behaviour. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying these factors were definitely played a part. They played a hell of a big part. Do you know what I mean? We can't say if this didn't happen, then he wouldn't have turned out like this. I ain't going to say that, but I'm going to say there was plenty of failures and that ain't good. Don't fail your children. Love the children and don't keep them in a toxic environment. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, if you're going to take a message from that show that's positive, then that should be it. It should be always be involved in your children's life. Give them the attention that they deserve and that they need as children. Nurture them and love them. Look after them and get them help if you see that they're going on the wrong path. If you can't help them, your family and the community can't help them, then you need to do what you need to do. Whether you need to go to a doctor, a psychiatrist, whatever the child needs, you need to help them. Don't just feed let or you know what don't just leave them alone and let them be like a the black sheep in the family and let them do weird things like in the garage by themselves in the dark at night when they're a kid like don't let them be weird and don't encourage weird behavior just because it gives you a break from parenting nah you need to do better the parents they needed to do a lot of better they had a lot a lot of responsibility on what went on in that household especially the dad both of them but especially the dad and then I think there was some kind of talk about studying the brain or like you know when he passed on studying the brain and finding out the psychology behind x y and z or obviously destroying the brain and the mum his mum wanted to um explore that and his dad was like nah and it was like that's a good question it's like this is what they do in labs, do you know what I mean? You've got the scientists, you got, I don't know what the, the professional term is for them. But they have them jobs and this is what they do. They look into the brain, they dissect the brain and they try and figure out, do all kinds of testing and try and see if they can find explanations for certain behaviours. So that could have been a good route to take, I guess. But obviously dad wasn't feeling that and then so they just destroyed him all, which is fair enough, you know what I mean? their end book closed but people need to stop being so hurt over the fact that this is a part of I guess American history and serial killers are always going to be spoke about because it's something abnormal it's something different it's something weird it's something that's unusual and people are going to report on it and the story is going to be it's history so this information is always going to be out there especially as long as the internet exists you won't be able to kill that information so you just got to take the positives from it and for me that's what I try and do when I watch a documentary I try and find what I can learn or what I can understand or what I can research and that's how I just see things I'm not taking all the negativity in and all the badness and madness none of that affects me like that so when people say oh it's weird for people to watch crime documentaries you're weird fam <laughs> listen fun you any i'm gonna watch what i'm gonna watch and you can't really try and judge a character off that because you don't know what my mind's like uh do you know what i mean so but yeah I'm, but I'm gonna round up here because i could go on and on about this for ages i was even tempted to do a live on this because you know, it's 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 a big topic, but at the same time, it's getting a lot of negative attraction. And I've heard the victims were not happy with the documentary, and it's just causing an uproar in the community. 
and I just feel like it's not that deep it's it's becoming not that it's not that deep I feel like the message is being lost that's what I mean the message is being lost and it's becoming a controversy and should we talk about it should we not talk about it and we're skipping away and uh, we're, we're leaning far far away from any kind of positive messages and that's what we should be doing when we watch documentaries like this and get involved with crime series or films whatever you want to call them I feel like you need to have an active mind <sighs> but yeah that's what I'm going to say guys so I'm going to leave it here if you've watched it um, let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts or opinions let me know in the comments and again guys don't forget to like share and subscribe take care guys bye